while new fundraising numbers are also out for what is expected to be one of the closest house races next year. According to FEC filings, Colorado Democrat Adam Frisch raked in more than two and a half million dollars from April to June in what is his second bid to unseat Republican Lauren Boebert. This past November, Frisch fell just 546 votes, just 546 short of defeating the incumbent congresswoman, who is not shy for controversial and, frankly, sometimes downright offensive comments. For more on that race, let's bring in NBC News senior national political reporter Sahil Kapoor, who joins us live on Capitol Hill. Uh, the congresswoman was last in the news for a fight on the House floor with her counterpart, Marjorie Taylor Greene. And she's looking at what could be a very, very tough race yet again. So, Hill, tell us about it. That's right, Jonathan. This was the big shock of the 2022 midterms. Lauren Boebert in Republican-friendly territory, having a nail-biter of a race barely hanging on. Let's show that margin. It came down to 546 votes against a little-known Democratic challenger in Adam Frisch. Now, Frisch is better known now. He wants a rematch. He is raising money hand over fist. Let's put those numbers back up on the screen. $2.6 million he raised in uh, the second quarter compared to Lauren Boebert, who raised $800. 18,000. I spoke to, Con uh, to Adam Frisch for the story. He, uh, he said of Boebert, quote, she is not focused on the district. She's focused on herself. He promised to continue hammering away at her on that. She, he said she doesn't seem to be taking the job any more seriously than she was before. Now, Boebert, for her part, spoke to my co-author for the story, Scott Wong, blamed her uh, near miss on ballot harvesting, which is the Republican term for third party collection of absentee ballots. She said maybe Republicans should do more of that. She goes on to say in the previous Congress, I wasn't able to do that as much because we were in the majority talking about delivering wins. Uh, and we have a wonderful advantage of having this majority where I can actually deliver wins for my district. Now, what wins is she talking about? It's not clear. Her office didn't respond when we asked her. She cited a few things in press releases in terms of, you know, a water bill getting out of committee, an endangered species bill, uh, getting a hearing, some rural health money for her district coming out of a bill that she voted against. Uh, but since coming back to D.C., Jonathan, she has thrown herself into these intra-party battles, which is what she's best known for. She's tried to stop Kevin McCarthy from becoming Speaker of the House. She's tried to force a vote to impeach President Biden before even an investigation happens. Now she's joining far-right Republicans and threatening to kill a government funding bill if conservatives don't get what they want as part of that funding package. I spoke to Dick Wadhams, a former Republican uh, Party chair in Colorado. He says a lot of Republicans at home are bewildered by her. The fact that she's not changing her style, the fact that she's not changing how she operates, uh, despite that near miss in Republican territory. He said this is going to come down to whether she is perceived as caring about her district, delivering for her district, or if she's just seen as caring more about fighting these, uh, you know, these battles in Washington. When you're asked for a list of wins, you come up with getting a water bill out of committee. Ooh. NBC's Sahil Kapoor, thank you for your reporting this morning.